I've gathered the best tips for playing killer from the best players in the Dead by Daylight scene. We're talking about dedicated players with thousands of hours, content creators, comp players, and even world record holders. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the three best tips for every killer. Trapper from Hybrid Panda it's often a good strategy to let a few generators pop. This will give you enough time to set up a good 3 gen and not let survivors know where your traps are. This way they just work on the generators, they don't worry about you and in the late game they run into all of your traps and they're forced into a 3 gen situation. When placing your traps, have a mix of very obvious traps that survivors can't really do anything about and some good hidden traps in high targeted areas and you can guide these survivors into these traps as well. Some obvious traps you can place are by the LNT walls and the less obvious ones are in grass patches around these strong loops. If you're in a very tough loop, fake placing a trap just might be the way to go. You simply click on the button and the survivor that's looping you might think you're placing the trap and avoid that loop altogether. This will more than likely get a survivor, and if not, you can always place the trap down too. Wraith by Virtual Blight Wraith has full momentum during his lunge when he comes out of the cloak. You can get a lot of free hits if you use that momentum as well. In the background, you're seeing a fantastic example of this by Virtual Blight, utilizing the maximum full potential of the momentum. Don't underestimate the power of body blocking as the rate, rather than just uncloaking behind the survivors. If you get really good at it, you can simply start zooming up ahead and then body blocking the survivors from making it to a pallet or a window and just like anything with practice makes perfect, once you get really good at this, you can start predicting the survivor's movements. You can fake cloaking and uncloaking by hitting your bell a few times to attempt to mind game a survivor. This way, you can get them to forcefully drop down a pallet or even get into more awkward positions. Hillbilly from Rapid Main Muscle memory is pretty much everything on Billy. Get used to the turn rate early on without using the add-ons and getting used to that curve. A good way you can practice this is by not facing the survivor whatsoever, getting a little bit parallel to them by the tile or the survivor itself, and then quickly trying to flick in the direction through the loop. Once you've gotten a handle of this and the turn rate, then simply apply the add-ons to go much faster. Patience is also very key on Hillbilly. Remember that you can prime your chainsaw and wait for the perfect hit rather than always holding down the button and using it once it's ready. By doing this, you'll have a much easier time getting survivors and get survivors into positions where they think they're placed incorrectly or even get them trapped. Lastly, since Billy is an insta down killer, survivors will play way more safe to avoid his chainsaw. A great tip will be to focus on hiding your red stain by moonwalking or spinning around jungle gyms and loops. That way, survivors won't be sure where you're at and where you're going to curve, or simply panic and get themselves killed in anticipation. Nurse from Super Alf the best way to use your blink is to try to blink where you last saw the survivor and then use your second blink in order to adjust this. This way you're not overcompensating and you can easily get onto your target. When using your first blink, try to prioritize getting a line of sight. This is probably the most important thing that you can do to make sure you're utilizing your blinks the most efficiently. That way once you have that line of sight, you can use the first tip that we gave you to use that second blink to get directly onto the survivor. Try your best to chase on less complex tiles. This way you can get easier line of sight of survivors and they'll have a more difficult time trying to mind game or juke you. When you head over to the really complex tiles, they can really outsmart you. So getting away from them and zoning them into different directions and into dead zones is a much better strategy. Myers by One Stocky Boy. Be wary of your stock management, especially at the beginning of the game. It might be very tempting to get all the evil within as possible from the first guy that you see and get closer to tier 3, but that also means that later in the match you won't be able to get close to tier 3, or worse, not even pop tier 3 when you really, really need it. And this can be the difference between winning and losing a match, so keep that in mind. Sometimes popping your tier 3 isn't the right call. If there are two or more injured survivors and you're currently chasing a healthy survivor, 
Sometimes it's best to down the healthy guy in tier 2 and let the healthy people heal up in the meantime and you can down those survivors in tier 3. This makes it more efficient to use your tier 3 and also buys you time since they're going to be healing instead of working on generators. Finally, it's best to learn the map layouts and papping that hide Myers as much as possible. Michael's biggest strength is ending chases before they even begin. So essentially, when papping to survivors, try to hide behind whatever objects you can while approaching. Hag by Gummy Peach Rings High traffic areas are the best places to place a trap such as the middle of the shack and in whatever main building is on the map. Think about where you would as a survivor run and that's where you want to place that trap. Remember, when you're playing as Hag, your trap gives off a dusty sparkling effect around it. That's your trigger radius. The closer to the side of the circle you are, the stronger the camera pull is when you trigger the trap. A great example of where you can place a strategic trap are the doorways of Midwich classrooms. They'll pull the survivor out of the hallway and mess up their movement, so be tactical when placing those traps. Hag has a very small stature, even though it says height is average in the killer description. She also has a smaller terror radius as well. Combining these two factors with perks like Monitor and Abuse or Dark Devotion may make for a very stealthy and fun killer. Breaking line of sight moving towards the survivor with walls or rocks makes it difficult for the survivors to track you down. Doctor by Herman the Doctor When you're first starting out with Doctor, it's good to use Zanzen Tactics, a perk for the Oni. Not only is this good for learning the tiles and seeing how they're built, but you can also see what's in front of you. You can react better with a well-timed shock to prevent window vaults and pallet drops. It's not smart to spam the shock therapy, especially when you're in chase. With every shock you do, you are 0.92 meters per second slower than a survivor. So when you spam the shock too often in your chase, it's very likely that they can run yet again around the tile. Once you're confident with your shock, don't break the shock pallet at all. Once it's dropped, it's going to become your best friend and you can trap survivors in a very cool way in the shag and get a guaranteed hit. There's actually some clips that you're seeing right now on this. Huntress by 7CM Princess. It's very important to learn the difference between your charged and uncharged attacks and know when to use them. For example, you can use your uncharged hatchets over obstacles like rocks and walls in order to use this as a deadly weapon. You can also charge up your shots to get a quick direct line of sight hit. Patience is key. Instead of full sending each shot as soon as they're ready to go, it can be very helpful to observe the survivor. Oftentimes, survivors tend to have a distinct pattern to dodge. For example, you might be playing against a survivor that always runs to the right. So at this point, you don't need to worry about anything fancy or do any tricks. Just hold steady, wait for the survivor to dodge, and then let that hatchet go. Learn your hitboxes. Oftentimes, people think that the hitboxes are absolutely crazy on Huntress. This means that this can go into your favor. Just because something looks a little bit impossible doesn't mean it's not possible at all. After all, we're talking about Dead by Daylight. Hatches can fit through the tiniest gaps and over the most strange rocks or corners. So try and throw to your heart's content. Oftentimes, good Huntress players are getting held back by their own creativity, so don't be shy. Leatherface by Spookin' Jukes Don't get discouraged if you bash into things and tantrum a lot when first playing, Bubba. Learning the spacing and a collision for the chainsaw sweep takes a lot of time. Dead by Daylight also has some really, really weird collisions, so take your time and be patient. His best add-on combo is award-winning chili and beast marks. This allows you to use the chainsaw at maximum distance and speed. Make sure you don't chain the sweep too early in order to get full value. Learning the timing can be tricky at first, but with these add-ons, you can catch up to the survivors after they even sprint first. Bamboozle is the best perk by far to use on Leatherface. Closing off windows will either get you a down or force a pallet drop early without having to worry about a survivor using that same window repeatedly to avoid your chainsaw. 
Iron Maiden is also another amazing perk because survivors often jump into the lockers to avoid your chainsaw if they have no other resources, plus they really never expect it. Freddy by Sunshine's Journey One of the most slept on add-ons for Freddy are the add-ons that change your power completely to Dream Palettes. A lot of people think this is a weaker version of his power, however, in late game, it's oftentimes a good add-on to use. In case you're ever struggling with Freddy, try utilizing this and it might change your gameplay completely. It's always essential to run a good gen slowdown perk on Freddy because of you constantly teleporting to generators. A good one that you can run is Eruption because you can constantly kick generators while teleporting or moving around and then the next time you get it down, you can get some great value out of it. It's oftentimes good to fake your teleports when in chase. This can push survivors off generators and essentially it's as if you're multitasking so you can chase the survivor and keep pressure on the generators at the same time. Bonus tip, a great add-on combination that you can run is Z-Block and Paint Tinder. Z-Block is great because once you teleport, you're going to reveal any survivors within 16 meters, and of course, Paint Tinder for those dream palettes. Pig by Scorpions don't be afraid of using her ambush, especially after the recent buff. It might sound simple, but it can be used in almost every single pallet tile in the game. You should, in most scenarios, start your dash when standing in the pallet, otherwise the survivor can just camp it and you won't get the hit. If you're crouching on loops and you notice that survivors are running away, you can start to use this to your advantage. If they run the moment you crouch at a loop, it basically means that you as a killer can control where they run. For example, if you know that to the left is a dead zone, then don't crouch until you see a survivor facing that way. They have no choice but to then run to that area, and this is an easy way to hit them and get them into an awkward position. There's oftentimes a lot of pig players that keep a backup helmet for near the end game, and while it's a valid strategy, it's much better if you start using them early on to create insane early game pressure. Clown by H Phoenix. Bottle management is very important. You don't want to use all your bottles at once. A good thing to remember is that your purple gas actually lasts for a total of 10 seconds, so you don't need to throw a bunch of bottles. Keep this in mind. You can use your environment to extend the purple gas. For example, hitting your purple gas on the trees or on top of a small obstacle will cover way more ground than normally throwing a bottle. So whenever you're in a loop or in a good chase and you have somewhere to throw it above, it is might be the better strategy. Using your yellow bottles are also very important, and sometimes people forget that this can really change the game. You can use this to catch up with survivors, use them before kicking a generator or even a pallet to gain distance, and most importantly, you can combine this with your purple. Spirit Sound is obviously going to be the most important thing that you can utilize, but a key thing that people often forget is you can hear breathing of healthy survivors. Whenever you're running around, pay close attention to if you can hear a tiny breath. Most of the time, these survivors are not running, so if you just hear a small glimpse, quickly get out of your face and you can quickly look around and probably catch somebody off guard. Remember, when you're phasing, you are way faster than the survivors. If you're chasing somebody down, they oftentimes will run to the nearest pallet and either camp it or toss it down. A nice thing that you can do is to go around the pallet, make them think that you're going to go straight through the pallet, they drop it, and you can get a nice easy hit. If you notice that they do the opposite of this and they kind of figure out that you're doing this, just flip the tactics and it's nice easy hits that you can gain. In my opinion, one of the most slept on add-ons is the activation speed for the spirit. This is only a yellow add-on as well, so you should have plenty, and if you don't, it'll be easy to obtain. And this can catch survivors off guard really quickly to use your power super fast and keep those chases going. Legion by Potato Legion Bring perks that complement your add-ons. Legions have a vast majority of build types and all work very well in very different ways. For example, for some versatility, you can bring in anti-palette perks and combine that with some anti-perk add-ons. Or if you want to go for anti-heal, you can do that as well with the anti-heal add-ons. A personal favorite of Potato Legions is to run Susie's mixtape with Dark Devotion. Do not be afraid to feral frenzy someone who's injured. Legion is not a 1v1 killer. Your goal is to constantly harass the entire team, not to win a 1v1 loop chase. 
If the survivor you're chasing is injured and has a good setup and you know there's someone there, barrel them for info and annoy someone else. They could be out position and lead to a quicker down. Never eat any pallets. You always want to bait a pallet because you can easily hop over it and get a free hit. You can easily bait this by doing a little spin in front or walking forward and backwards and oftentimes the survivor would drop it. If they do not drop it, you can play more aggressively and counter this. This will take some practice to know when to properly utilize it, but you can get a free M1 or M2 hit on them. Plague. A bonus tip from Mint Skull is that if you are playing the plague, hitting the antenna at the top of the generator will also infect it. So you don't have to walk all the way to the generator. If you can see the pole, puke on it and this will work. If you manage to get a survivor down and they either cleanse or they're not infected and you have them on the hook, you can actually puke at their feet to get them infected. This way, the next time they're off the hook, they are completely infected once again. Don't waste your time chasing a survivor to fully infect them with your puke. You can just hit them one time and once they're infected, they will then go on do their own thing and this will naturally speed up on the more actions that they do. You just need to get them initially infected and wait for them to become broken and then it becomes easy work after that. Ghostface by SK if you're about to get revealed, try crouching or breaking line of sight as soon as possible. Sometimes even some thick grass or foliage alone can save you from being revealed, so try to play around this. Crouching also helps significantly, you'll be shocked how much it actually works. Always stalk survivors to 99% progress before exposing them and don't expose them until you're about to hit them. This way, no matter what the situation is, you're guaranteed to get that hit. This way, you can also choose to leave them mid-chase without having to worry about wasting the expose. You gotta remember that survivors that are exposed play a lot more safe, so it'll be a lot more difficult to get them because they'll constantly run you to good loops, but when they're not exposed, you could catch them off guard when they're in an awkward position. Make sure you're playing around the lean stalking. Leaning off of objects makes your stalk two times as fast, so you should be practicing making every stalk a lean stalk. It's also good to get in the hang of using crouching to lean off smaller objects that would be too low to lean off while you're standing. Demogorgon from Monster Kill Become super efficient and really good with the power, you should always be shredding no matter what. This can even be used to getting distance for timing and learn the hitbox itself. Don't use your M1 unless you really have to. With the Demogorgon's power, you can easily zone survivors. Basically, hold your mouth open and survivors would oftentimes not go to a window or a pallet. You can use this to your advantage and get some nice easy hits. Knowing your loops is going to play a major key factor. This way, when someone is going to a specific loop, you can know when to charge up your power to get the perfect hit on them before they make it to a vault or a pallet. For example, if someone's going around a corner, you know that they're probably going to go for that pallet or that window, so you can charge your power up preemptively and by the time you turn the corner, you can get that quick hit on them. Oni by Lippy Getting the first hit when playing as Oni is the most crucial part of the game. Sometimes, if the game goes on for a while and you don't get your first hit, you will literally have no power whatsoever. So getting that first hit is vitally important. You can use a perk like Lethal Pursuer in order to know exactly where the survivors are at and then combine it with other perks along the way to make sure Lethal has value throughout the game. Survivors are going to try to heal as efficiently as possible or at least the good ones, so your job is to make sure that they're not healing at all. Sometimes it's smart to prioritize going against survivors that are not injured in order to force them to heal, thus wasting more time as they're not going to be on a generator. You can combine this with other perks as well to slow down the healing and this will be a huge benefit to you. If you're in fury and you down a survivor, it's oftentimes worth it to pick that survivor up very quickly unless you see another survivor. That way you can preserve the remainder of your power and quickly charge it up again. Death Slinger by Osu Deathslinger's Harpoon is not like the Huntress at all. It has a very small and precise hitbox. So, keep in mind, whenever you're using the weapon, you'll have to lead your shots ahead, meaning this will have time to travel. So, anything that's distant, you'll have to aim ahead of them in order to achieve a perfect hit. When a survivor is harpooned, both the survivor and the killer camera angle are immediately turned to face each other. 
You can use this opportunity to pull the survivor while moving either left or right to change their orientation, forcing them to either run away from you or through you. Pallets can be the Deathslinger's worst or greatest ally. There's actually only a few situations where you're required to break the pallets. For a lot of the pallets, you can actually shoot the survivor and still get them. You can force the survivor to either vault or take an M1, allowing you to catch the survivor mid-vault and reel around obstacles through a very easy M1. If a survivor drops a pallet inside of a jungle gym, for example, depending on your positioning and angle, you can create the same effect as well. Pyramid Head a bonus tip from Mint Skull. Keep in mind that when you're using the Judgment, your power will only go down if you start it before a slope. So, an area like the basement can be utilized very, very well. But remember, you can't really go uphill. So, if you're trying to go up, it's not going to work. So, don't use it. The best perk that you could run on him is I'm All Airs. You can even combo this with Lethal Pursuer if you like, and you already got yourself a really good build. This will help you anticipate the survivor movement through walls and line of sight blockers, making it very easy to use your power. For add-ons, in my opinion, it's a slam dunk. You want to get the double range add-ons because, quite frankly, they're the best ones. This makes it so your power has a ton more range, making it much more easy to hit survivors. Blight by Lilith Omen when you're using your rush tokens and you're in a chase with a survivor, you can oftentimes rush to a pallet or a vault to stop them from accessing this. This is a nice way to zone the survivors and make sure you're stopping them from getting to their targeted area. When using your tokens, try to get as much distance as you possibly can before slamming into a wall. This is what is known as a long rush or going long. And whenever you're trying to get distance, this is the best and most optimal way you can use the power because just one or two seconds cutting the power short can be a big game changer. If you're really close to a pallet or very close to a wall, by quickly pressing the rush button and the attack button, you'll be able to instantly break that pallet or instantly hit the survivor, making tons of the actions way quicker. The Twins by Linksy. Now the twins did get a rework and realistically all you need to do if the patch continues to go out is just use Victor and you're pretty much good. But if they do make changes to the twins, here are the best tips for them. Use Victor's killer instinct to track survivors. If you see scratch marks or you want to protect the gen, you can place Victor there. Hold Victor's aim steady, similar to Hunter's hatchets, and wait for the survivor to run in front of you instead of trying to aim at them directly. This will help with your pounces significantly. Leave Charlotte in hidden spots so when you come back to her, you will always catch some survivors by surprise. Trickster by the Worst of White Don't spam. Spamming even with no recoil will make it so that you lose a bunch of your knives very quickly. Unless you know you're going to land, try not to spam too much. Use your main event in the open or before someone vaults a window, causing them to animation lock themselves. Main event can be a hindrance and may seem like you can use it whenever and wherever, but try to use it strategically where you know you'll get the most value, or else the cooldown when it ends will screw your entire chase. There's a split second between when you hit the throw button versus when the knife actually flies. This can be used to flick the knives to go where you want them. If a survivor is swaying from side to side, you can use this to fix your aim and land more knives, all while avoiding spamming. Nemesis by Ots. Dragging your tentacle sideways is super important to cover more ground with it and to make it harder to dodge. However, your tentacle hitbox is vertical and goes from top to bottom over time, so you cannot drag it if your opponent is behind a short obstacle. You can take advantage of the fact by hitting through low gaps at the end of your tentacle. In some situations, especially if you have some kind of insta-down available, you might want to not hit a survivor with your tentacle when they drop a pallet. In these situations, you can aim slightly sideways as they drop it to guarantee that you break the pallet without hitting the survivor and avoid giving them a significant speed boost. If an infected survivor is about to wiggle out of your grasp because the hook is too far out of reach, you can let them wiggle out next to a zombie, and they'll get hit before they can do anything about it, making for another easy down and giving you some more time. 
Pinhead by Field Agent. When using your power, make sure you're using it through walls. Do not be afraid of doing this. If you're not going through objects, you're essentially limiting your own gameplay exponentially and getting those good hits will come by going through walls. So make sure you're aiming through these in order to get those hits. A good way to do some corrective action if you are using your power incorrectly is by quickly moving your chain into the ground. In no time you'll be back in action and you can shoot another chain and this will save you so much efficient time. Understanding box logic is huge when playing the Cenobite. The quickest breakdown of this is the 4016 system. Essentially, the box will always spawn 40 meters away from the Cenobite and 16 meters away from the survivors. By using this logic, you can keep it in mind and whenever you're looking around for the box, you know that it can't be super close to you and it will be right around a survivor. Artis by Carnivius. When using your crows, it's ideal only to use one crow at a time. If you manage to get a survivor and you use all three crows, you're going to have to wait 12 seconds in order to get the crows again, which is a big waste of time. Instead, use one crow and if you manage to hit a survivor, use another similarly like Huntress Hatchets to get a free hit. It is especially important when playing the artist to keep in mind what survivors are doing. Take a look at their tendencies, note what kind of exhaustion perks they have, because this is extremely vital when playing a character like herself. In order to land these crow hits, even if you have the best setup, a survivor can easily run a certain way, and they tend to do this often, and will completely throw your power off. By understanding what that survivor is doing, you can easily use this against them. One of the best builds that you can run for the artist is Barbecue and Chili, I'm All Airs, Lethal Pursuer, and either Deadlock or Dead Man Switch. Not only will this give you easy information, but it can also slow down the generators, aiding your gameplay. Onryo by One Pump Willy Don't be afraid to teleport. It builds Condemn, it gives you info, and prevents survivors from picking up Tates, and it's also great for your mobility, so make sure you're teleporting. Learn to use the Manifest mind game while you're in chase. When you manifest, your form flickers visible to invisible. Double back when you're invisible to catch survivors off guard. You can tell when you're invisible by looking at your hands. Stay demanifested until you're ready to hit. This lets you avoid pallet stuns and you can immediately teleport if you see someone near a TV. Dredge by Gaming Athlete The best tool that you have in your arsenal is your remnant. Use this in chases to easily mind game survivors by either teleporting or not teleporting to the remnant and getting some easy downs. By using a remnant, you can make a situation where you're almost guaranteed not to get a hit to almost a 50-50 or a guaranteed hit. A sneaky thing that you can do with your remnant is leaving it by an exit gate. This way, survivors won't be able to access it whatsoever and you can patrol the two gates very easily. While it might seem like a good idea, it's often a better choice not to teleport mid-chase unless you're in nightfall mode. If a survivor is able to mind game you or even figure out where you're going to teleport mid-chase and you're not in nightfall, those extra seconds can be very, very costly. Wesker by Scooty Booty One of the biggest things for Wesker in particular is patience. Knowing when to charge your bound is highly important. Some tiles are just not playable with him, and forcing out the pallet and using power to cut off can be far more consistent than just using your power at a tile, so be patient when it comes down to these loops. Wesker's collision is detected at the start of the bound, so you can keep this in mind to go through gaps, doing hug text and everything else. His texts mainly come from this, and if you can control it, this will work greatly to your benefit. Since Wesker has the ability to throw survivors in one direction and move them away, you can use this to zone survivors into certain areas. Certain add-ons like the Chalice and Beetle allow you to carry to edge map or throw them away from the tile to zone them in any other direction that you like. The Knight It is very important to know all the special abilities that all of your different minions have. The Carnivix will be able to kick generators much more effectively, the Assassin will be able to chase survivors much better, and the Jailer has a wider detection range. With this in mind, you can utilize it to better assist you during your chases. 
If there's a breakable wall or a pallet and you have the Carnifix available, it's oftentimes good to utilize him to break that because he does it much better than you can and you can easily get a hit or even get survivors off guard. Remember that when your guards are doing any sort of action, this will stop the survivors from actually utilizing that action. So in this case, if the Carnifix is breaking a pallet, you as a knight can go around and get an easy hit on the survivor because there's not much that they can do. Don't forget, if you send out a guard in order to walk on a path and they are not finding any survivors and doing nothing but hindering you from using your power again, you can always hit them in order to call them back. This will automatically get rid of them and start recharging your power. Skull Merchant by Pixel Bush. Survivors have a 3 second immunity window after getting scanned by a drone where you can't be scanned again. If you memorize the window, you can rotate a drone to cross a beam over a survivor right at the end of the window to give them a second stack as they try to leave the tile. When a drone deploys, the beam spawns facing exactly where you're looking at when you press the button. If you place this beam directly on top where the survivor will be when the drone turns on, you can give them an instant stack. This is called laser tagging. Skull Merchant has no cooldown at all after injuring someone with a claw trap. So if you can keep track of which survivors are at two lock on stacks, you can two tap survivors instantly by injuring them and then M1ing for the down in an instant. Singularity by Coco Latte Don't play Singularity as a defense heavy character. Focus on the infection and creating pressure by slugging and infecting all of the survivors. You don't need to be defensive with this character whatsoever. It's often good to remember the EMP crate spawn location. Knowing them all allows you to occasionally cut off a survivor that's trying to receive an EMP and you can get an easy hit on them. It's often good to have at least one slug survivor at all times. This will make your gameplay significantly easier when playing the Singularity, and even better if they're not gooped already. This way you can just keep an eye on the slug survivor, and anyone that runs there, you can easily teleport to them and get some easy hits. Bonus tip for myself, don't forget that if a survivor is indeed infected, you can aim directly at them with your weapon, shoot them and teleport instantly to them to continue the chase. Xenomorph by the Mr. Headache. Deal with the flame turrets the moment you see them. Flame turrets are your main counterplay for the survivors which can knock you out of your crawler mode. It is crucial to stay in your crawler mode as much as you can because this is where you have access to your tail attack, your extremely oppressive anti-chase duel. In order to safely keep yourself in crawler mode, you need to destroy those flame turrets on sight. You can actually strafe your tail attack the same way Nemesis can straight their tentacle attack. However, the big difference being collision will stop your hitboxes unlike Nemesis. To strafe most effectively, move your body or WASD or left control stick instead of trying to move your camera. This keeps your vertical plane level for excellent accuracy. Don't forget to use the tunnels as much as possible. While you're in the tunnels, your crawler mode charges 8 times as fast while in the tunnels than it does at default. You also gain 16 meters of footstep detection and sound detection while in the tunnels to track the survivors. And don't forget, you move extremely fast at 18 meters a second in the tunnels, making it a superior way to travel around the map, and it's way better than simply walking. Chucky Ideally, you want to hit the survivor with your M1 before using your Heidi Ho mode power. This way, survivors are bound to make more mistakes or play more defensively, dropping pallets or going through vaults, and then you can use your power to keep them into animations, which will easily get you some free hits. Make sure you're always utilizing your Heidi Ho mode, even when you're not in chase. Remember that this makes an audible noise similar to Hillbilly's chainsaw and making them paranoid that you might be right around the corner. Don't forget you also have no heartbeat during this time so you can easily catch survivors off guard for some easy free hits. Chasing survivors around tiles with big line of sight blockers are going to be your go-to. You can easily mind game survivors by simply moonwalking and getting some good hits on them. Because Chucky is so small, it's very easy for the survivors to make mistakes when trying to keep an eye on him. The Unknown by One Pump Willy 
Be sneaky. Don't let survivors stare at you and then undo the weekend debuff. Hide around corners or teleport around them. The less they know where you're coming from, the better it's going to be. It's oftentimes a good idea to go for lob shots on the objectives. Perks like the Scornins, Nurse's Calling, or any aura reading perks will help you to line up some easy shots on unaware targets. This is much easier to do than hitting someone that is reacting to this mid-chase. You can click your power button repeatedly to prevent your hallucinations from spawning. This lets you control exactly where it drops. You can know exactly when a hallucination is about to spawn by the soft little fog that rolls up on the left and right hand screen of your game. Once it has that noise indicator and gets really tall, a hallucination is about to spawn. Simply spam your power button repeatedly and then put the hallucination wherever you like. Well, there you go, kings and queens. Those are the best three killer tips that I can give you for every single killer from the best of the best players. All of the links will be down in the description as well as more detailed responses to what everybody said. I'll literally copy and paste it for you guys because some people went above and beyond. I've had this video on the back burner for months and months and months. I think it's almost been a year now since I first initially mentioned it. So I'm very happy to put it out for you guys and hopefully help you guys in your gameplay. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below and please check out every single person that gave their time to help with this video. All of the links will be down below. If you want to see more of me, feel free to subscribe. We're also going to be live on twitch.tv slash the king and I'm reviving my second channel where we'll do a lot of discussion videos. So hopefully we'll see you there. But that's going to do it for me. As always, I'm the king. I tip my crown to you guys and we'll see you in the fog.